one incredibly powerful card that we saw that was very, very meta right before version 43 was one of the tribe with a very, very powerful passive. Literally, what does the math say behind this card? Amazon is the tried and true way of shopping for anything you need or want at the lowest prices. Support the channel at no cost to you by doing your Amazon shopping through the link in the video description. Hello yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Silfen. We're taking a look at the math behind one of the tribe. So guys, what is the TLDR? Basically, it's a high agility cost card that gives you a lot of base power and a ton of health. For some reason you gain power for each nearby allied hero so you can get up to 82 power uh, when you're grouped up with your entire team essentially one of the tribe is an above average health tank card honestly it is it has a ton of hp on it the amount of nearby heroes needed to rival other damage cards other 10 to 13 cost damage cards, and even some of the tanky cards that do a ton of damage as well, is only 1.35 heroes. So as long as you have at least two or more heroes, you're honestly likely to do more damage than any other card anyways. Uh, one of the tribe has an above average amount of base power on it. So you know what? It's actually just great all by itself. The burst potential through most heroes kits while grouped up with the rest of your team is a strong consideration for gameplay strategy etc and that's why we saw that it's so meta in version 42 to 43 because while well, when you're grouped up i mean you can just burst down anybody even when one is alone one of the tribe has a high amount of power for its cost it really really does with one to th three ne allies nearby one of the tribe has a strong potential to rival and out damage um, most other high cost cards when completely grouped up with four allies one of the tribe has massive potential to provide deadly burst and sustain damage literally anybody with the potential to be one of the most damage oriented cards while at the same time rivaling a lot of tank cards one of the tribe might be a mandatory card for any growth deck for any hero literally so, ladies and gentlemen, that was the TLDR. What is a more in-depth look? What's the math behind it that kind of proves some of those statements? And if you want to learn about the card, here it is. So, guys, if you don't know, one of the tribe is a 10 agility, 3 vitality growth card. It's a 13 cost card. It is bloody expensive. You gain 22 power and 422 health, which is a lot of either stat. So, with a very high base stat card, the passive is also very strong. It's called group power. Gain 15 power for each nearby allied hero. So if you're alone, you gain nothing. You just have 22 power. But when you start doing the math for other heroes around yourself, well, it starts to get crazy. So 22 all by yourself. Once you have a nearby allied, 37 power, 52 with two, 67 with three, and 82 total power you gain from one card for having four allies around you. It's pretty insane. 82 power guys on anybody goes a long way. Since you get 10 agility, and you're probably going to get a little bit more agility than that as well, you are hitting probably close to two times a second. That's 160 DPS right there with your basic attack, is all basic attacks have one scaling. Uh, with abilities that scale, you know, have, have one to three, some ults to go all the way to six times power scaling. I mean, that 82 when grouped up, even 22 when you're all by yourself, I mean, it ha it's, there's the, the potential is, frankly, unprecedented with one card. Now, this, what you're seeing here is hopefully not too complicated, and I will explain. On the left here, we have cards. Their attribute point cost 10 AP for Yom Yomi Guardian. 12P, standing for power, 240 HP, standing for health, 24 BA, meaning basic armor, or AB, ability, um, ability armor, or ability defense. Uh, they've changed their, 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 their um, terminology, and I just kind of used my own, really. So that is, these are all the cards that are similar in, in design, similar in function. They either give, give you damage and health, or armor, 
or some kind of sustainability. So it's the same kind of thing. Now, what I've done is a lot of the cases I've I've included their actives. I've I've included all of their actives and um, and 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 passives and done some rough math, some rough, fairly ed, fairly ed, educated in in in, in my opinion, uh, guesses as to what the damage is going to be in kind of like a seven to ten second team fight slash in kind of your realm of influence sort of a thing. So, this is the number of allied heroes you need around you in order for one of the tribe to act like some of these cards. Something like Plague Lord Malink, I haven't taken that slow into account uh, since that's a utility and we're only talking about damage and, um, and sustainability. But of course, stuff like that you have to consider as well. Corrosive Walker, for example, um, I'm not sure if it's a shred off the top of my head. If it is a shred, that's another consideration that you have to take into account. Stuff like that. Um, I haven't included the more utility things, but damage and HP and sustainability is what I have taken into account. So as you can see, look at this average amount of heroes needed around you to, to be just like all of these cards. On average, you need about 1.35 heroes. So of course you can't have 35% of a hero around you. So basically you need two heroes around you in order to just rival that of any other card on average. Of course, some of them, Unstable Cyborg still actually does a tremendous amount of um, AOE damage. Um, uh, Sorvik Initiate can deal a tremendous amount of damage if you use it on a tank, stuff like that. Of course, there are some that are hard to um, kind of take into account, such as Withering Shadow, how many people you're using it on, if you have it active on or, or not. Um, so some of them, of course, will do a ton of damage and it'll be hard to rival that through one of the tribe, but on average, it's looking like you don't need many heroes around you for one of the tribe to just run away with it. Relative HP is it is how much does this card compare to one of the tribes? So, for example, Yomi Guardian, seventy-five is kind of a seventy-five percent of a tank card um, than one of the tribe. Black Ice Routine, it's fifty-seven percent the tank card or the health card than uh what then one of the tribe of course some of these just run away with it like true tank cards sort of like initiate for example godmother vigilant um even vampiric blade has ridiculous potential on carries like carries go from a quarter a third health right to full with vampiric blade vampiric blade can just provide a ton of sustain and ultimately tankiness um on, on a carry, mind you. So some of them, of course, has a tough time competing, but when you average it out, basically one of the tribe is whatever that is. Every other card is 91% on average, the tank card compared to one of the tribe. Isn't that insane? So some factual statements then that we can make um, about one of the tribe with some of my assumptions, with some of my um, with some of my math that I've done. Basically, one of the tribe is an above average health slash tank card. It is. It has gives you a great amount of health uh, when you take into consideration all the other cards that are out there and the health and the armor and kind of you take all that into account. It's an above average HP tank card. When the card is 10, when, when, when the card is 10 thirteenths a damage card, agility, it's still an above HP tank card. I don't understand why that is the case, to be honest with you. The amount of nearby heroes needed to rival other damage cards on average is 1.35. I mean, I have to round that up to two uh, near, nearby enemies, so if, I mean, nearby allies. If you are grouped up with even one, really even one, um, especially two heroes, you're getting the damage, especially if your kit, you know, if, whether you're burst or sustained damage, I mean, it's going to be really effective in the damage department. One of the tribe has an above average amount of base power, which is a, a consideration of itself. If you just want power, um, if you just want power, like on a carry to just deal sustained damage through your basic attack, like it is a consideration. 22 power. That's 22 more damage on your basic attack. If you're attacking three times a second, two times a second, that is a ton 
of damage. The burst potential through most heroes kits while grouped up is a strong consideration for gameplay strategy etc and that was the meta we saw right before version 43 at least in that pml it was uh it was a wraith carry followed by the cc train the back it up into a thunk into a smash and grab into a sev is to a subjugate into a into a seismic assault it was just the absolute insane um and then of course everybody was wanting everybody was running one of the tribe um it was just absolutely insane it, uh, it was unstoppable, just to be honest with you. It's seriously unstoppable. So my conclusions here for one of the tribe, even when you are alone, one of the tribe has a high amount of power for its cost. 22 is, is, is well above average. Yes, there are some like 25, 20 and stuff like that. But you know what? It has a high amount of power for its cost. With one to three allies nearby, one of the tribe has a strong potential to rival or, frankly, uh, do more damage, or give you more damage than most other high cost cards. It's kind of crazy. When completely grouped up for allies, one of the tribe has massive potential to deal deadly burst and sustain damage for any damage dealer. And even single-handedly has a has the potential to change the way you play the game. Uh, you know, grouping up, doing you know being very precise in your you know in your crowd control your focus it really has a strong potential to change the way uh heroes play teams play etc so with the potential to be one of the most damage oriented cards while at the same time rivaling a lot of tank cards one of the tribe might be a mandatory card in any growth deck for any hero seriously for any hero yeah, you have to go. You have to go pretty deep into into agility, ten agility. But you're rewarded with a ton of damage. So if you're going for that, anyways, you're going into two agility, and and you can get that even as a caster for Pete's sake. Um, 82, 82 power on one card for your abilities, nuts. And um, even if you're going into agility and you're worried about tankiness, well, it rivals a lot of tank cards to begin with. So. It's kind of okay that you go into agility anyways. So I don't understand why this card is 10 thirteenths agility, but it gives you 420 health for only three, for only three vitality. Um, the, the, the delineation between the three attributes and what their purpose is, is blurred when cards do this. Um, and this is, this is going far, far and beyond um, the guide portion of, of one of the tribe is more of a statement, more of my own, my, my, my own issues, my own, uh, worries behind card design and what this is saying, but there you guys go. Do you guys share my, my own concerns, my own kind of questions, queries? Let me know down in the comments. Patreon allows creators to offer their fans a way of supporting them and what they do. With flexible and painless payment options, anyone can support their creator for as little as $1 a month. If you would like to help me do what I love, check out the link in the video description to learn more. Please like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it, share the community, of course, guys, subscribe if you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful, please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. I got a lot, I got a lot coming for the rest of October. Uh, November is going to be just jam-packed because I'm having trouble keeping up with my own schedule. So please subscribe if, uh, if you found this useful. Please check the video description if you want links to my website, merchandise store, Amazon affiliate links, and of course all my social media. Till next time, like always, stay optimistic and positive.